<clears throat> yes. The, uh, we soon realized that the question of digitalization was unavoidable as it imposed itself on us. It was necessary to step back and, and reflect upon the philosophical basis of such an enterprise, digital archiving itself as a philosophical act. Although the above uh, Paul Beaumont project will be issuing for several previously unpublished materials as traditional print monographs, including Paul Beaumont's dissertation, The Post-Romantic Predicament, Edinburgh University Press, the Paul de Mont notebooks um, and an English translation of Paul de Mont's post-World War II art criticism, Jacques Vian, and the drawings of Paul Valéry. The publication wing of the project centers itself on a, a Paul de Mont, on Paul de Mont's 219-page handwritten manuscript for a book on Rousseau that was to be titled Textual Allegories. In one sense, this handwritten manuscript on Rousseau sets forth a book that remains unpublished. In another sense, calibrating the handwritten Rousseau manuscript uh, pages and the corresponding pages in de Mont's allegories reading indicates the textual allegories as the first draft for the material that was eventually published in allegories reading. The predicament uh, that arose over the status of the handwritten manuscript called for a resolution that rethinks the distinction between so-called unpublished materials and, pu and published texts. In short, it called for the dissolution of the distinction between the archive and the book. This is where digital technology enters the picture and in effect creates a new picture. Uh, a digital archive reconfigures the act of publishing and the act of archiving in one hybrid procedure. Originally, uh, Demand's textual allegories written during the early 1970s um, was to be a conventional print publication, but given the possibilities that digital technology now opens up for archival material, there has been a revisioning of the destiny of this manuscript, one that Demand would probably never have imagined. Now, the handschrift of Demand concerns digital humanualities, the digital touch of the human hand. In the spring of 2008, the Paul Demand papers set to work on securing computer resources, expertise, and software for a quasi facsimile revision retained transcription of textual allegories to be presented online and hosted by the California Digital Library. Uh, textual allegories uh, will innovate a hydrotext, a multimedia, multitask, multi-linked, multi-headed, handed, digital entity that dissolves the distinction between the book and the archive. A digital archiving publishing entity such as the Critical Theory Digital Archive enables the presentation of audio and video material, something the digital children of Open University and Open Humanities Press already demand. I'll never forget the day when I was trying to hunt down a citation to the name of the academic journal that published a somewhat obscure essay by Heidegger called uh, Hebel, the House Friend, which ironically is in part on modern technology and computers. Instead of coming across a staid journal name, I was taken to a YouTube video presenting Heidegger sitting at a wooden table delivering his lecture into the wide aperture of a 1950s microphone. And in the case of Paul Demand, although his papers are at UCI, Cornell University holds audio cassette tapes of several of his lectures, including the messenger lectures he delivered there in the early 1980s. Again, I'll not soon forget the peculiar experience of hearing Demand's recorded voice after having studied the allegories of reading, the rhetoric of romanticism, the resistance of theory, and a study aesthetic ideology for the last 20 years. As a scholar of deconstruction and demand in particular, you just can't beat having a handwritten manuscript, a revised typescript, a lecture recording, institutional correspondence, and scholarly notebooks, all digitally at hand, as we will soon be calling it. And rather than substituting for traditional paper archives, digital collections stimulate an interest in visiting and researching the singular holdings of scholarly print collections. Digital archives also enable the integration of the holdings of various institutions, along with a link to the audio recordings of Paul Demand's messenger lectures held at Cornell University's own library. The Critical Theory Digital Archive could also link to Stefano Rosso's infamous an interview with Paul Demand, published in The Resistance to Theory, which is now available for the year through the RAI IT portal, the digital archive of Radio Televons Genomi. Italiana, Italy's public broadcast network. 
Rye has an impressive archive of sound and video files featuring 20th century philosophers. The Critical, Digi Critical Theory Digital Archive could provide accessibility for the blind um, as well. For instance, the recordings of the messenger lectures would be valuable for both the blind and the seeing alike. And the question of digital haptology perhaps in, perhaps in fact comes to the fore with the blind since reading is done with the fingers, or digitally, as it were. The online publication archiving of Paul Beaumont's textual allegories offers an example of the book, uh, of the future of the book, and how it might relate to the digitizing of historical archives. Work done so far on the Paul Beaumont project can serve as a basis for a pilot project that inaugurates the CTDA. After having worked on this proposal for a critical theory digital archive, I see the necessity of taking digital scholarship in the open access movement seriously. So I thought I'd take the plunge, start swimming, and start thinking about revising my own dissertation techniques in the sublime as a multimedia hypermedia e thesis. As a graduate student at UCI, I shot much film footage in response to my studies. This audiovisual material is an intellectual dowry that I can now digitally put to use as part of a multimedia hypermedia e dissertation. Uh, Culture Machine Liquid Books is already looking for this kind of experimental digital entity. Yet the question persists, what kind, what, what would a deconstructive digital archive of the Demonian kind be like? Paul Demon remains a unique figure in the theory era of American and, intel and European intellectual history, as a theorist who rethought the philosophical implications of aesthetics and reading in the late 20th century, the Critical Theory Digital Archive project links demand to a broader horizon to which his legacy is bound. This future is bound up with the future of the book. It is, this claim, it is the claim of this paper to assert that our era of digital techniques determines and brings together both the destiny of the archive and the destiny of the book. Demand's work is one that thematizes and rethinks the fundamental question of the archive, and it does so in terms that already prefigure the transformation of archives and archival work by digitization. For instance, in Demand's uh, stress on mechanical memory and good darkness, and the uh, peculiar mater uh, material of inscription. Theories of Archival research must now be bound to practices of digital publication. That digital technology, as well as techniques in general, determines the nature of institutions and discourses has often been asserted by several leading critical theorists, most notably Jacques Derrida, Paul de Man, and J. Hillers Miller themselves. It is only fitting that the future of a critical theory digital archive should be preempted by a digital initiative that situates itself upon the question of the archiving of their work. In a double gesture, the blueprint for a deconstructive archive will both address uh, the challenge of Derrida's prohibitive uh, statements concerning emerging technologies and give rise to a future application to digitized materials from the Paul Demond papers and the J. Hillis Miller papers housed at the University of California Irvine Library Special Collections and Archives. Thank you very much.